you were asking me before we started the program about this issue of, uh, of the integrity of, of polling data. Let me give you sort of my two cents on this, if it's okay. Yeah, please yeah, do, please. So, because so, it's been so a huge poll- issue the last three or four elections. Yeah. yeah, so here's the thing. There are two ways to look at this. One way is you ask people, what do you think about issue X? Are you for it or against it? Position A or position B? For it or against it? That's, that's, that's the quantitative approach to a lot of these issues. And sometimes when I look at polls, I just start laughing. Because I say to myself, they're asking people's opinions without knowing whether they know the issue even is on their radar screen. Mm. So the other approach, which I take in the focus groups is, have you heard about such and such? What have you heard? What is the basis upon which you are forming an opinion? So Tuesday night coming up, I have a perfect example. I'm going to ask about um, uh, Breyer's retirement. But I'm going to ask, how many of you have heard about this? How many of you have heard that Biden made a promise to nominate an African-American woman? What I want to know is not whether they think nominating an African-American woman is a good thing or a bad thing. I'll get to that at some point. But I wonder whether they even heard that news or am I the first person even mentioning it to them? So you've got the thing that you see endlessly in the media and you see it in liberal media, you see it in conservative media is how is event X happening today? on you know, whatever date, late January, early February, going to affect the November elections. And the fact of the matter is, it isn't. Most yeah. 98% of the stuff that happens during the year has no resonance whatsoever. In the moment, it seems like a big deal to us. But if I asked you about something that happened you know, in January of 2020 and how it would affect the November election in, in 2020, you, it would seem preposterous. Yeah. Why? Because we had a pandemic, we had riots. <laughs> I mean, there was a huge amount of stuff that intervened. Yeah. So, so we got to be so careful about what we ask and how we think it's going to affect the, the discourse. And what I'd basically uncover, I think, at the end of the day, is that most things that happen in Washington have no bearing whatsoever in the minds of the people I'm talking to. They barely are a blip. Yeah. Well, and that that's a it's such a great point because I was I was thinking about this Breyer. Well. We haven't heard from him officially yet. No, that's been the At least most... I checked, but but the White House leaked that he was going to retire. Um, and th- there was immediate chatter among the chattering class about, oh, this is going to be helpful to Democrats. They're going to show that they're motivating their base by him nominating an African-American woman. I mean, depending on how long this takes, unless this thing drags out until October— I think you're right. It's going to have almost no impact on the election, no. right? No, it's not. And, 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 and how many people have you met who are going to vote based upon the selection of a Supreme Court nominee? I mean, it's ridiculous. It's so far removed uh, temporarily from when it's going to matter in October and early, no- and early November that it's, it's, it's preposterous. Um, I, I, what'll matter, what could matter more is if, you know, Roe v. Wade gets overturned. Right. And then suddenly a lot of people on both sides get animated for different reasons. But that, that's, a, that's a landmark decision. It's something that people feel very passionate about, obviously, on both sides of it. And that perhaps that could bring people out one way or another if, if the candidates and the parties decide that they want to make this a huge issue and they see some, some electoral advantages to be gained by it. Right. But the, the nomination of a Supreme – these people can't even name a single person who's on the Supreme Court, for God's sakes. Right. To, to say that, that Breyer, who they probably wouldn't even recognize if they walked past him on the street, his retirement is going it's, to – it's not going to matter. I, I can I can virtually guarantee it. But but you're listening to the chattering classes. You're going to think, oh my goodness, this is such a huge opportunity. It get, enables Biden to change the conversation. Yeah, the conversation for yesterday and today and maybe tomorrow. And then when he finally comes out, he'll he'll drag it out. Uh, you know, the naming of someone, and he'll parade people in and out of the Oval Office, and he'll show that he's taking the process seriously and so forth. Yeah, it'll get media hits here and there. But at the end of the day, huh. Seriously, with my swing voters, I'd be shocked if, if the, the selection makes any difference. Yeah. The thing I'm dying to know, though, is will, they, will these swing voters in some ways be frustrated or unhappy with Biden because he specifically made a promise to nominate a woman of color? That's the thing, and particularly an African-American woman. Is that going to be something where I'm going to get pushback? I'm very curious to see whether that is going to happen. Because in the past, when I've asked these kinds of questions, the response is, no, the president should nominate someone who he thinks is the best person. 
Right. And d- did Biden perhaps get the process wrong? In other words, say I'm going to nominate the best person, happen to nominate an African-American woman, show her credentials and say, this is the best person I could find, as opposed to saying specifically, I'm picking a person based upon race and gender, and then have all the possible uh, candidates fit into that categorization and then just pick from that much smaller pool. And that's where I'm curious how people are going to respond to that. And then I'm, and I'm anticipating some people will push back. So then I've, I'm, I'm, I'm trusting none of my uh, folks group respondents are listening to this podcast. <laughs> probably my not. Fo- <laughs> no, my, probably follow-up, not. <laughs> yeah, my, my follow-up question is going to be, in 1980, three weeks before the election, Ronald Reagan made a promise that he was going to nominate the first woman Supreme Court justice. He actually made a, he had a huge event around it. He made a big deal of it. It got a lot of play at the time. I want to know, well, if you thought it was a mistake for Biden to, to make this promise, was it a mistake in 1980 for Reagan to make that promise? That's a great follow-up question. Yeah. Oh, yeah. man, and, I'm going to be and, really looking forward to seeing your results on this one. 